Okay. So, uh, like Kayla said, the meeting for tonight is science update with Josh. We're going to try and make it fun. Um, and I'm going to try and make it as uh, easy as possible to understand because there is a lot happening uh, with the science uh, in HD nowadays. Um, to start with, a disclaimer, not a doctor. <laughs> and uh, none of the material I cover uh, is medical advice or to be considered medical advice. Um, I'm not even a medical research specialist. What I am is my wife got tested in 2021 for Huntington, Huntington's disease and she tested positive. And my way of coping has been just to dig uh, into research as much as possible. I look at it literally every day. Uh, it's, it's part of my morning coffee routine, basically. Um, so to get started, I wanted to do a video um, from the Hereditary Disease Foundation. And from what I was hearing earlier, a lot of people might not know what that is, but it's an organization founded by Nancy Wexler. Um, some people might recognize that. She's a big name in HD. But basically, what are the scientists saying uh, is what this video is about. So I'm just going to play that real quick. It's a short video. This is a really exciting time for Huntington's disease and researchers because we're at this critical juncture where we're just starting to test the next generation of therapeutics and it's the first generation that's been developed specifically for Huntington's disease and is targeting the very core problems that go wrong in the brains of Huntington's disease patients. Oh my gosh, so the excitement in HD is the incredible number of, of very smart people who are tackling the HD problem. We know much more about the disease, what goes wrong. We know from a lot of work in mouse models that if we target the Huntington DNA or the RNA, we can make a big difference to the mouse models. We have begun to understand the root cause of various neurodegenerative diseases like ALS, Parkinson disease, probably Alzheimer's disease. And with collectively, if we can put our minds together, very soon we'll be able to develop some very rational approach to cure. Ah, I'm sorry. Because cure needs very detailed understanding of the disease. It's like a culmination of decades of work all coming to fruition now. Um, so we have technologies that took decades to develop that are being put into clinical trials for HD and so it's it's so exciting to watch this happen. All right, cool. So yeah, as the, you can tell from the video, um, there's a different note with some of what they're talking about. The scientists are definitely a little more excited now, at least from my perspective. Um, so what are some of the big advances that have happened in uh, HD knowledge in the past? Some of it's from the past decade, but as they said, but some of it is very recent. Um, I'll go over some of the basics as well, just because it's worth noting. Um, the Huntington protein is necessary for life. Um, probably not that surprising. That's why it's also difficult to treat. <laughs> um, some interesting tidbits about um, things they found out, though, is that um, the CAG repeats that we're dealing with, they tend to be part of why uh, like organisms have a more complex nervous system. Humans have the highest CAG repeat, uh, so it's no wonder that we're the smartest, right? <laughs> um, but there was an experiment done where plants don't have the Huntington protein. Um, so they put it in them and they grew twice as large and they lived twice as long. So it's actually a really important protein. Um, some other interesting tidbits are, uh, people with Huntington's disease have an 80% reduced cancer rate, which is, uh, I don't think I've ever heard of anything like that for another disease. So that's interesting. Um, they've got some new techniques, um, to really buckle down and see what's going on with the disease. And they're starting to find out that it might not be the bad protein exactly, but the Basically, the recipe to make the protein is what's bad. And if you mess up your recipe, you get a bad cake, right? So that's basically what's going on. And part of that is they've been able to find 
fragments of that bad recipe that are causing a lot of these issues. And once they find something and they name it, so they've found one of these fragments, which is HTT1A. You don't got to know what that's called, but basically it's the reason the recipe uh, is bad or one of the reasons the recipe is going bad. And once they start finding stuff like that and naming it, uh, they can do better work. Um, and, and that's why things are progressing a little faster now, I think, or they seem to be anyway. Uh, one of the big ones that I'm really interested in is CRISPR. Some people may have heard about this. Some people may have not. The short end of it, not to go on forever, is uh, CRISPR is basically editing your DNA. It's a brand new technology developed within the past decade. Uh, somebody won a Nobel Prize for it in 2020. Uh, there are people coming in. Let me let them in. Um, and a year ago, just a year ago, I was watching a webinar where they said it's going to take years to target the what they're now referring to as the expanded Huntington gene. They're not really referring to it as mutant the mutant gene anymore. It's the expanded gene because they're finding that your body can use the protein. Uh, it's just that recipe that gets bad. Long story short, last month, uh, a group of scientists was able to target that expanded gene with this new CRISPR technology. Uh, but I will go over that a little bit later when I focus on some of the trials going on. Um, some other big news, they revamped the stage model, which is basically the stages of the disease for specifically for clinical trials. So now it's a nine, there's nine stages to it so they can have a better output from all these trials. Uh, they developed a new mouse model that's more accurate. They now have HD patient donor cells, so they're able to make the neurons from your skin cells and test it in the lab. Um, a lot of the observational studies that have been happening have uh, really come to fruition. Um, and they've been able to find a lot of genes from people that are getting the disease later. And they're like, why is that happening? And they're starting to figure out why. Um, and there's, there's so much more, uh, as the last one says. Too many to name, honestly. Uh, but the long story short is that scientists are zeroing in on the disease. Um, and I know it sucks, but it takes a lot of time, work, and skill. Um, but people are trying really hard uh, for everybody. Um, there's a lot of good work going on. So on that front, before I dive into the clinical trials that are going on that I'm excited on, I will very quickly, I will not try to bore everybody too much, uh, but how do clinical trials work? And this might be a little hard to read, <clears throat> but so this is from the HDSA website and they actually have a pipeline tracker. And you can see these are some of the Korea modifying drugs and they've gone all the way. They've got a little green check mark. I will keep it really short. Uh, there's basically a development phase where they're trying to find out, find a drug that can target it, uh, optimize that, basically see if it'll work the best way possible. And can they even make it? Is it possible to manufacture this? That's that's an issue that's not talked about a lot. And then we finally get to try and put it in people, maybe. Um, so that's phase one. And phase one is basically, is it safe? They just need to know that uh, people will be safe taking it. Phase two is, what is what is the best dose? And is is are those doses still safe? Um, a little bit of, is it working? But mostly, is it safe? And when they get to phase three, that's when it's exciting because it's safe. They know the dosage and they're going to uh, test it in a large amount of people. And that's when you get the real data uh, that'll tell you whether it's working or not. I hope I made that <laughs> as compact as possible because it's really complex. Um, and the way they basically know it's working in the phase three is they use, um, I'm sure you guys have run into it a little bit when you go to your uh, neurology appointments, there's some scoring that happens, uh, like the TFC, which is a total functional capacity uh, score. So it's like one to a, it's like one to a ten or one to a hundred, and they rate you on how you're doing. Um, and if you don't decline in rating, the drug seems to be working. Uh, is basically the short gist of that. So moving on, uh, trial update. This is a short list <laughs> of what's going on right now. So we've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, about six that I've listed here that I'm excited about. There's five or more in development. And then there's the CRISPR technology that I was talking about. So I'll go through these kind of quickly until I get, uh, there are some that you probably have heard about. I won't go too quickly, but some of them I think are a little more exciting than others. Um, if no one heard, Roche is uh, continuing their Tom and Ursin drug. Um, they just announced this last week, I think. Well, they announced it a few months ago, but they just announced last week that they are starting uh, phase two again. So they are actively recruiting now. Um, I'm sure everyone knows that their phase three trial, their phase three trial failed in the summer of 2021. Uh, that was right before my wife got tested. Uh, so that was, uh, I'm sure for me and everyone involved, a little devastating. But they're back. They did see uh, people that were earlier in the disease. Um, they showed some impact. So they're going to test people that are a little earlier and see what happens. Um, they haven't changed much, much except for that. And there's really no other information. So that's about that. Uh, so Wave Therapeutics. This one I'm excited about. Um, you may have heard about Wave in the past. They've previously run two other drug trials. And in the news, they really just tell you that, oh, the trial failed. The reason those trials failed is because Wave is trying to do something a little different. Um, they are only targeting the expanded Huntington gene, um, which is a bit more complicated. And what they've really been working on is getting that uh, chemistry right. And they seem to have done it. Um, so they recently announced in their new trial that the chemistry and superior delivery system that they've been working on seems to be working in the people they're testing it on. Uh, they are seeing a reduction in the, uh, in the uh, expanded uh, Huntington protein, which is really exciting because um, the past two trials, they haven't even gotten it to work at all. And now it's, it seems to be working. So I think this one is a really good test to see if just the lowering is a good um, strategy because they're still actually trying to figure that out, whether just lowering the protein production uh, is good or not. Um, the only part that sucks about it, just to be honest, is that it's an ASO, just like Roche, where it's injected into the spine. And that part is uh, not everyone's favorite. But if it works, I think uh, I think that'll be okay. Uh, this one's an interesting one. Uh, Spain, uh, and I think they just confirmed it as well over in UCLA in California. Um, Huntington's disease kind of has a similarity to another disease, which is a straight up biotin and thiamine deficiency. These are just like general vitamins. You may take these for your nails or your hair. Um, and the research showed that HD patients do in fact lack biotin and thiamine. Um, they tested it in some mouse models um, and it showed some promise. And they're currently putting together a study to test high doses of biotin and thiamine in people. Um, this one's worth noting, I think, mainly because it'll be really nice <laughs> if you can just go to your grocery store and get uh, biotin and thiamine vitamins. And uh, so that the ease of access for this one is is why it's worth noting. Um, so that'll be nice. Uh, and then we've got Sage Therapeutics. Um, so we got Sage 718 being developed. Uh, it's basically to aid in mild to moderate cognitive impairment. Impairment, So sort of like Pridopidine. Um, this is nice because it's going to be an oral gel pill. Um, so no spinal infusions. That's a big, that's a big nice one. They are currently in phase two. Uh, so they're determining dosing and we will know more later this year. There hasn't been a lot of news about them, which is why this slide is a little short. Um, but they are also not, if I remember correctly, they are not HD specific. So they're also testing in uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, which is why there's probably a little less information. Someone's trying to come in. There we go. Um, so don't fall asleep yet. This is my dog, Loki. <laughs> she is she is old and tired, and hopefully I'm not boring every, everyone yet. Um, so here we... This this is where we get into the stuff that I'm a little more excited about because it's getting a little more uh, 
advanced and specific for HD. So PTC Therapeutics, they're developing a drug that is referred to as a small molecule. Um, and the reason that's a big deal is ASOs like Roche and Wave, um, when they put it in your spine, the idea is it goes up your spine into your brain and it goes, you know, kind of sinks in. The problem with that is your brain has like a cover over it, basically. It's called the blood brain barrier. And it's really hard to get stuff through that, like really hard. Um, but these small molecule drugs that are starting to develop now are, um, are able to pass through relatively easily, if not really easily. Um, and just to show some of the work that's, the, the hard work that's been done, PTC started by screening 300,000 different molecules. Uh, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. They, out of 300,000 molecules, they found two. <laughs> Alone two molecules that, uh, that might be helpful. Um, and the nice part is this is designed specifically for Huntington's disease. Uh, and it's also designed to lower the protein and the RNA. And if you don't know what RNA is, again, it's basically the recipe. So you've got your DNA, which is in there, and your body makes copies of everything. And the copy of the recipe uh, is the RNA. And the RNA, they think, is actually the problem. Um, so if it targets both, that's extra exciting. Also, it's a pill. You will take it orally. Uh, it lasts about six weeks, which is really good as well because they can change the dosage. So it's very easy for them to go, well, this dosage isn't working. We'll try more, we'll try less. It's very, it's much easier to maneuver with. Um, the only downside is like Roche, it lowers both the normal and the expanded protein. Um, so that's, we'll see if that works. Um, because like I said in the beginning, the, the normal protein is essential for life. So they have to be really careful with that. Um, they are currently beginning phase two, though. So they're, they're past phase one. They know it's safe. They're, gonna, they're starting to dose people. Some of you that pay attention may have seen the news that uh, there was a hold on the study. Uh, that's really just a paperwork hold, from my understanding. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with the drug or anything yet. Um, in Europe and Australia, it's it's good to go. And I kind of have a little jab there, uh, half-heartedly, that Europe tends to have a little bit of stricter controls. So if it's a go there, I think it's gonna be relatively safe. Uh, next up is Unicure, and they are trialing AMT-130. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a big deal as well. It's the first gene therapy for HD. Um, it's also designed specifically for Huntington's disease. Um, the interesting thing about this is it is a one-shot therapy. Um, so as I was saying for the other drug, like the small molecule, where they're able to get past that, that protective blood-brain barrier, Unicure decided that instead of trying to find a molecule that can get around it, they're going to do surgery. So they are um, they are literally doing brain surgery and inserting capsules with a super thin needle into your brain. Um, and it's going to release a, a, a drug that will modify your genes and lower uh, Huntington production. <clears throat> I believe it also does both the normal and the expanded protein. Um, so far, they are in phase two uh, and they are uh, doing uh, two doses, a low dose and a high dose. Um, but because it's permanent, and it's it's a one-stop shop. Uh, they're being extra careful, um, and that's why the again in the news earlier there was a the trial was temporarily halted. Um, that's because some people were waking up after surgery and having some issues. Everything cleared up and they've been greenlit again. Um, but they're just being extra careful because it's it's not something where they can modify your dose. It's it's a one and done thing. Um, so that makes sense. And then the other one is a Nexon, trialing ANX005. Um, though they're not targeting HD specifically, they have an exciting new approach. Um, so what they're doing is, instead of targeting the Huntington gene or the, 
or the Huntington protein or the RNA, they're actually going after other stuff that might impact the disease. And they're targeting something called C1Q, which is basically, it's like a controller in your brain that decides whether a cell is bad or not. Um, and they, they think that the protein clumps from uh, Huntington's disease sets this off er, a little too early. Um, basically, you're, it's almost like an autoimmune issue. Um, and they think if they get this to quiet down, your brain will actually, because they have shown this, your brain can actually naturally clear up uh, the Huntington clumps or the protein aggregates as they refer to them. Um, but this tells your brain that, you know, those cells have to go, they're too damaged. So this stops that and tries to let your brain take care of it a little more. Uh, they're currently in phase two. Uh, they just recently had an update a few weeks ago, and the interim data shows the treatment is safe and it's reaching the target. Um, we, we should know more, uh, in, I guess, in a few months. Um, they might have some actual preliminary data. Um, but about four months ago, they did actually release some data already that showed that um, people were stabilizing uh, when they took the drug. Their symptoms were actually like stopping where they were, which is a, a pretty big deal. So hopefully that continues. Um, and then we've got Perlenia trialing Perdopidine. Uh, some people in the group may have seen me write about this. Uh, Perdopidine is super exciting. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> we know the history of drug trials. Uh, they are currently on track to seek FDA approval this year. And by this year, I mean right now they are wrapping up phase three um it's uh it's a pill that you'll take orally twice a day uh and they are currently designing a study for pre-symptomatic uh people with hd uh so people that aren't even experiencing symptoms and what this does is i'm not entirely sure what a sigma one receptor is <laughs> it regulates several processes that are impaired by hd uh, but basically uh, Perdopidine uh, is kind of like a hype man. Like when you're going out to play like a game or something like that, uh, it basically hypes up your system and um, it activates something called autophagy. A few other things, but autophagy is the big one. Um, and basically what that is, is it's the trash men of your body. Uh, and it's essential to cell function and survival. Um, basically your body, and that's what I was talking about, where your body can actually clean up those those toxic aggregates. Um, so the autophagy is the process of basically the trash truck coming in and taking it out. Um, but if these get impaired or they don't, they might not even know to activate is part of the problem. It might not recognize it till it's too late. So again, this is, this is hyping up your system and, and making it work. Um, it's shown to slow progression of the, of the disease. And so far they have five years worth of data and it has slowed down the progression. Um, to put that in terms, like if you're, if you are able to work right now, you could work for five more years, um, basically, um, or wherever you're at, you could have five more years of quality of life, uh, which is no small, we all know that's no small thing. Um, so like I said, they're currently in the final stages of phase three, they're wrapping up and they will seek FDA approval in quarter two of 2023. Uh, it, if it's approved, it will be the first therapeutic approved for Huntington's disease to impact disease progression ever in, in the history of the disease. So that is a really big deal, in my opinion. Um, so then we've got CRISPR, which is, might be the end game. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd do a little uh, Captain America versus uh, Thanos, which is obviously HD in this scenario. Um, we're gonna we're gonna whoop his butt is is the idea. Uh, so CRISPR, like I said in the a er, little bit earlier, it's a brand new technology. Creators won the Nobel Prize for it a few years ago. Um, it's basically a molecule that can cut your DNA, and you can they can reprogram it or snip it back together. Um, and I want to be really careful using this word, but it has the potential to be a cure. Um, if that's, but that's how they're talking about it anyway. Um, but, 
uh, kind of like the Unicure thing. It uh, oh, I'll, before I go over that, in December 2022, they had a new study uh, that used HD donor cells and the new mouse models, and they used CRISPR to target the expanded gene. And when they did it in both the donor cells and the models, the toxic RNA clumps or the aggregates, as you'll hear it called uh, normally, were totally cleared, and the cells then cleared the toxic buildup. Um, they basically went back to normal. Um, so this type of test was said to be years away, uh, and it's here now. Uh, so the rapid pace that they're going on is is pretty big. Uh, but again, a word of caution, uh, CRISPR needs to be tested extensively uh, because it is permanent. Uh, just like the Unicure's AMT-130, many things could go wrong because uh, they're literally snipping your DNA. Um, so they have to be extra careful. Um, but that is that is where it's at. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting, in my opinion, again. Uh, and that's it. That's all I've got for now. I tried to go quick. Hopefully I didn't uh, put everyone to sleep. I will unmute. And uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Or everyone can unmute Hello? themselves, I guess. Hello? I can't unmute everybody, apparently. So with the prolinea, if it is approved, will any HD patient be able, allowed to take that? Or is that just going to be for early stage HD? I don't, in, I'm not entirely sure. Um, the parameters for the clinical trials are they want people that aren't too sick, um, but they want them, it's kind of hard, it's kind of harsh to say this way, but they, they want to be able to see that it has an impact on the disease. Um, but they might, if a doctor gets it, they might try it. Um, cause the cons, if it slows down progression, I assume they would, um, give it to someone. <clears throat> But it, it's, I just want to be clear, it's not regenerative, so it won't reverse your symptoms. It's its just meant to, like, <laughs> slow it down or halt it, if that makes right, sense. Right, but, but I'm sure, like, most everybody that's dealing with mm -hmm. HD, if they could stop it where it is, like in my husband's case, he's considered mid, kind of late mid. So if it could stop it there and not make it to late stage... I'd be a happy camper, you know. No, a hundred percent, and I I am fairly certain that that's that's how it would go down. Um, but again, I'm not a doctor. I can't speak for what a doctor would prescribe you. Right, um, right. But in in my imagine when I'm imagining the drug finally getting to everybody, um, mm -hmm. they they would they would probably do it. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> right. right? I mean, agreed. Agreed. It's, it's it's proven to be safe. Uh, yeah. So they they, should, they would, in my brain they will do it when I'm here when I'm thinking it out. So yeah. Hey Josh, may I ask a question? I don't I don't know if you can hear us. Absolutely, I can hear you. Go ahead. So Josh, how does one get into a trial? Do you know? There's there's a couple different ways. Um, one of the best it some of it depends on your geography so if you're near a center of excellence they should be aware of trials going on and you okay. should be able to contact your neurologist or the center of excellence um ad, okay. whoever's working there and you should and just tell them that you're interested in joining trials and they should be able to sign you up um trials aren't done everywhere right. um, they want to get the maximum amount of people and the, the best data that they can yeah, we're in California, so hopefully I think we have uh, a few choices there, right? Yeah, California's a good shot. Okay, great. Uh, I think they're, Thank I think you. Like, yeah. Enroll, enroll HD.org and, and sign up there for trials, too. Oh, wonderful. Thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, that, that's another – I was thank you, Dave. I was about to say that. Um, there, Yeah, so there's the, there's the observational studies as well, which I, I – meant to plug into this but it's not a trial and it's not really a science update um but the observational studies have proven to be invaluable um, we you know josh we actually are part of that at uci i think that's what you're talking about so this will be our third year that we're there they basically um assess 
um, Cliff for, you know, how, how the, the disease is, I should say, advancing. And I think that's what you're talking about. It's a research uh, at UC University of Irvine, California. Are they taking samples? No samples. Oh, no sample. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, blood, 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 blood. Blood. Just okay. Because. I don't know if you said I, tissue or anything like that, but no, blood, no, no. Yes. Just, just any sort of, I think they can they are. measure some stuff with blood now. Oh, good. Nowadays. Okay. Um, We're getting ready to go back again for the third time. And, and we just do that for the, for the good of the disease and for the, um, to help others, you know, to try to, and himself to try I, to find. Yeah. I can confirm that that has been helpful because they've actually been able to see, um, like some of them have been going on for 10 years now and they've been able to see someone like my wife has a CAG of 42 um, and say another person has a CAG of 42 they're actually been able to see what why is this person presenting at 40 and then this person's presenting at 50 right. when okay. they both have the same disease why are they presenting differently and through all these uh, blood samples and other tests they've been able to narrow down okay. some genes that uh that are actually oh, targetable so interesting okay cliff has 42 yeah. as well he's a oh, cool. 42 as well very interesting okay yeah. thank you josh i don't want to hog the questions but uh, i appreciate that thank you no problem anyone else part of that is all, everybody has you know different sets of genes that go along with the huntington's gene so like you can have two children in the family and one can be tall and and slender and another one can be short and stocky, muscular, and things like that. Yep. So the way the body processes thing are different, and that's why they could have the exact same CAG but progress differently. Yep. Yeah, they're finding a lot of modifier genes like that, Dave. So it's it's a very interesting time. And some of them seem to be targetable with drugs. I was just actually reading an article today about that. So. Hey, if you don't mind me throwing something out there. Go for um, it. I know, I know Kay had, uh, I think it was Ashley from Picnic Health. And yeah. when we were at convention in June, we signed up with Picnic Health because Sage on their um, updating uh, portion of the clinical trial um, section of convention, they, had, they said they were actually partnered with Picnic Health to help find people for their trial. And that's why we immediately walked out and signed up with Picnic Health. So that, that might be an idea too. Um, we're clinical trial people. We've done, we've done about three and my husband was actually in the Roche trial. Um, but uh, I, throwing out information just in case someone wants to try to use it. And with Picnic Health, um, those of you that aren't familiar with them, uh, it's free for Huntington's patients, um, and I believe you get a $200, um, at, right now they give a $200 virtual gift card for signing up, but the, the main reason we signed up was because Sage was going through them, and I think a, a couple of others are in talks to do it as well. Yep. Yeah, the, the Picnic Health is nice because they're conglomerating all, it's perfect for clinical trials. Because they're they're gathering all of your medical data and putting it in one spot. You guys are saying picnic health, correct? Picnic health. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's helpful just for the doctors too, let alone the the trials. So, oh, the, well, there is one other place to go. This one, I, it's difficult to navigate, so I have a hard time recommending it. But clinicaltrials.gov, um, mm -hmm. and if you type in Huntington's disease, stuff will come up, but. It's not really meant to be user friendly, but they have contact information, uh, like direct contact information for all the studies um, to okay. ask to sign up. But That's you, what I use to find them. Yeah. Clinical yeah. clinicaldiseases.gov, you said? Clinicaltrials.gov. Trials, sorry, that's what I'm missing. Okay. So Josh, on the um, gene editing, is that kind of like brain surgery or like how, like, what is it? No, is it's, um, I'm not entirely sure how they'll administer it. It's, it varies a little bit. Um, it could be a pill. Um, it could be, uh, it could be intravenous. Am I, uh, am I still, I'm mean, getting internet is unstable. Am I still good? You're no, still we good. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it might it might be intravenous. Um, it could be brain surgery if they find out that they can't get it into your brain. 
um, <laughs> properly. Like it, it, it's a bit. So I for CRISPR, they're they're actually uh, doing it for sickle cell, which is another thing that's super hard to cure. And that that what they're actually doing is they're taking a blood a bone marrow sample out of your body, editing the gene there, and then putting it back in, and then your body like learns to recycle it properly uh, and the sickle cell gets cured <laughs> oh so yeah so wow. that, that that's a bone marrow transplant mm -hmm. um and they're yeah so who i'm not entirely sure how they're gonna do it but um i'm excited and i think way. we're also doing something with type 2 diabetes where they've got a treatment using crispr yep yeah they're looking at everything with it now Every, everyone's trying to look look at it and they're even developing new uh, ways to do CRISPR. So even the the technology itself is advancing, not just the what they're targeting. So it's pretty pretty cool.